this right here, I disagree with almost everything it says, but I'm just going to point out the ones that I really, really strongly disagree with. It says in 2006, he was carried by Ricky Davis in 06. I can't really explain the level of stupidity in that statement. Then, it goes on to say in 2012, he was carried by D-Wade. I don't know where they even got that from, as LeBron literally torched, and I mean torched, the big three Celtics. We already know that legendary game he had in game, I think it was game five or game six against Boston, the round before the finals. We all remember the finals against that OKC Thunder team who was actually favored to win that series because they had just beat the San Antonio Spurs. They guess it was a lockout season, but again, if you go back and look at it, if the 2012 season had been an 82 game season, the Thunder was on the uh, was on pace to have a 60 win season. So that's just that's just on research. So and then LeBron played outstanding in the 2012 finals. I don't know where we got this carried by D Wade in 2012. Now, if they had a one 2011, the year that you got as choked, then all the way I could agree with that because D Wade played. D Wade was undoubtedly the best Heat player uh, that he had in the 2011 finals. I don't know where LeBron went in the 2011 finals. Y'all could have had that if they had a one in 2011, but he lost that. Um, on to the next year, 2013. Uplift by Ray Allen. I already have a video about this Ray Allen situation and about how I feel about it because people act like, okay, game six, games, I'm not saying game six wasn't important. I'm not saying that Ray Allen shot wasn't important. It was. It helped send the series to a game seven. But at the end of the day, and LeBron James doesn't have a triple double in game seven, they're no, they don't win that game. They don't win that game. It's that simple. Um, Ray Allen hit a very great shot, very clutch shot, one of the most legendary shots in playoff NBA history. I agree with all of that. But in Game 7, where was Mr. Clutch Ray Allen at? He had a donut in Game 7, while LeBron James had a triple double. If that's not showing up, I don't know what it is. Now, 2014, spanked by Kawhi Um, and the Spurs. Now... Um, I can agree with that part. Uh, by spank, you mean by like, you know, they won in easy fashion. Um, they beat them in five games when I remember it. And yeah, I, I remember that series. LeBron still played a very great series individually. Um, the team just didn't play the rest of the, the rest of their part. The team got outplayed most definitely in that series. 2015, kick by Steph. Disagree with Kyrie Irving hurt. Next, 2016. Now this, this, this is the one. This is the one that is the reason for this video. Carry by Kyrie in 2016. Now, I know I remember the 2016 finals vividly. Um, LeBron and Kyrie helped the Cavs come back down from three one. And in games, I think, 4, 5, or 6, I think it was game 6, though. Comment, uh, uh, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but I think it was game 6 when LeBron and Kyrie combined for 81 points as a duo when they both had 41 points in the game. Oh, wait, I actually have a photo of that. Yeah, this one. 41 points. Both of them combined for 81 points. They're the first, they're the first set of teammates to score 40 plus in an NBA Finals game. But in the post, it says LeBron was carried by Kyrie. And see, I understand Kyrie Irving had the shot. I understand, it. but we gotta, we gotta, we gotta quit acting like that they both didn't have a legendary moment in that game seven. LeBron had the block. Kyrie had the shot. They both, as a duo, carried their franchise to a championship in 2016. And this is a fact. I 
don't know where we got Kyrie carrying LeBron when they combined it for 81 points. That's just ridiculous. 2017-18. I mean, should I should I should I really talk about those two years? Especially 2018. Should I? I mean, literally. I mean, we already know why LeBron got swept. You have the supporting cast. I'm not even trying to sound like that broken record LeBron fan that always says LeBron has no help and all that, you know. But for real, for real, like 2018 was like 07 the finals. We already knew it was. The, we already knew the NL. I, 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 I can't. I can't even express that enough. Like what? And if we just gonna skip past 2019 because I know it says no playing, which is actually a fact. Yeah, there's no playing. But in 2019, and LeBron hadn't gotten hurt in the rec- uh, close to the end of the regular season, we would have at least made the playoffs. I'm not saying we won a championship with that roster because I didn't agree we was going with that roster in the first place um, at that time, but. LeBron definitely would have got to the playoffs. Definitely in 2019 if he had got it right. 2020, the Mickey Mouse ring. The ring that everybody keeps trying to talk about and make fun of and act like the circumstances is what it is. I'm going to say this. The bubble was great basketball. Forget the traveling. Forget everything that you, you know, home court advantage and all this junk. It really showed who the true hoopers are. Because at the end of the day, this is basketball. And that's what, the, that's what the bubble reminded me of. It reminded me of just casual basketball. Forget all the fans, the arena, all the traveling, all that junk. You come out there and you do your job and you hoop. And see, you go, it's, it's, it's winner or bust in the bubble. That's what it was in my, in my, in my opinion. The bubble was a winner or bust for me. Because I feel like the only reason why people discount this ring is because LeBron won it against the Miami Heat. Um, and it's crazy because you guys knock LeBron for being that Miami Heat team, but they will praise Jokic for being the same Miami Heat team with the same superstar. That's crazy. Um, that's really crazy to me. I just find that ironic. Um, and then... 2021, beaten by the Suns. Uh, LeBron and AD both got hurt that year. We already know about that. 22, no play in. And then 2023, we swept. We got swept by oh the number one seed. Now, I don't know why people want to sit up here and act like uh, 20, like last season wasn't a blessing. Because I haven't even cap before that trade deadline. We was looking a little worse than we did in 2019. We wasn't even going to make the playoffs. Even with the healthy LeBron before that trade deadline. Trade deadline happens. We beat the defending champion Warriors in the second round. And we also beat another top three team or top five team in the West in the first round against the John Moran Grizzlies. So 2023, to lose to the eventual champions and to lose in the conference finals, by the way, swept in the conference finals by, like, in context... For real, for real, it was a blessing in disguise when we really got that far because we wasn't supposed to get that far, especially with that new team that we had just gotten through the trade deadline. I was going, I was thinking we was going to lose against Golden State, who has the greatest shooting backcourt of all time. But you know, 